four quick takeaways for us. I want to encourage you, don't, don't be familiar with the things of God. Don't be familiar with the things of God, but instead trust in Him for your salvation. Do you know it's possible to know all kinds of stuff about God? Students, you can know all the right answers, but have you surrendered your life to Him? Adults, you can have gone through all the motions and you can want something better for your own kids, but have you surrendered yourself to Him? Don't be familiar with the things of God, but trust Him. Give yourself to Him. Second, learn to wait on God and seek His will rather than to lean on your own wisdom. It's the simple truth and wisdom of Proverbs 3, 4 through 5, but it's the very challenge that Jacob had. <laughs> that we have, that his own grandfather had Abraham to to want to help God accomplish his way uh, by just adding our little bit to it. Um, There's something to be said about learning to wait on God, seeking his will rather than leaning on our own understanding. And secondly, rehearse the blessing of your spiritual inheritance. Uh, Just write these verses down. Look up Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. It tells us that the spiritual blessings that we have in Christ... Are, are, are wrapped up in the finished work of Christ, that we're welcomed and adopted by the Father, that through Christ we're redeemed and, and sanctified and forgiven of our sin. We're sealed with the Spirit. We have these precious and great promises that are ours. Rehearse them. And we were just talking about this in our equip class in Hebrews chapter 10. Do you know in order to rehearse the inheritance that you have with God, you actually need the people of God. That's why the author of Hebrews says, hold fast to your confession and don't forsake gathering together with the saints. Those two things aren't separated. Holding fast to our confession is is why we need to gather with the saints to rehearse the blessings of our spiritual inheritance. We need to hear it from somebody else. And not just through the preaching of God's word, but through the fellowship of God's people. And then finally, we're encouraged to flee our sinful desires and fix our eyes on Christ. Philippians 3.18 says, Many of whom I have told you, Paul says, and I now tell you with tears, walk as enemies of of Christ. Their end is their destruction. Their God is their belly. Their God is their desires not submitted to God, that consume them and deceive them. Their glory, they glory in their shame with their minds set on earthly things. But, but you, your citizenship is in heaven. From it we await a Savior. Fix your eyes on Christ. Run the race, the author of Hebrews said, that's set before you. Letting go of the entanglements of sin that trip you up. Looking to Christ. Fixing your eyes on Christ, the, the, the perfecter of our faith. The author and the perfecter of our faith. All of us will be tempted and tripped up by our desires. But God shows us a better way than being enslaved to them. We come to him in repentance. We flee our sinful desires and we fix our eyes on Christ.